for having me here today. Um, I've actually just discovered a lot of uh, cross cross sale uh, ideas. Uh, if I look at B Solar, they need funding. They could get it from Lend, so crowdfund their solar panels. Uh, the, the, all the payments would be transacted by Inverse, uh, and we make it our, our loans would make it onto a Zeitgeist team, uh, and that obviously helps our company in terms of valuation. So Protoss would be trading our ICO in their asset management. Um, Good, and so it's definitely worthwhile. So always, when I do a presentation, my first question is always, who has never heard of Lent? Okay, so quite a sizable amount of people, so that shows me that it's definitely worthwhile coming here. So who are we? Um, our claim is we make better rates, or we, we have better rates for everyone. Um, I don't think I have to explain uh, what a peer-to-peer -peer lender is. I think uh, most of the people are familiar with the concept by now. Um, I've actually structured this presentation in a way that will also give you insights into a live demo. So if you're not yet a lender on Lend, uh, you will get the insights of what the, your dashboard can look like and what the product actually is. Um, just a quick forward. Uh, Lend, we founded in 2015 and then we went live in January 2016. Uh, we did the seed round uh, at the early 2016, just recently closed the Series A, well not so recently in uh, April this year, so overall we raised a little over 5 million, uh, both angel and VC backed, and we're scaling up the business and we're looking to do a, B, a Series B round spring of next year. So no imminent funding needs, that's why I'm not really talking about funding here at this presentation. So, uh, if we look into the next slide, when we started with uh, Switzerland, that's not a typo, that's the name of our company, uh, which operates the Lend, the, the Lend brand, um, we knew that, you know, uh, you talk to investors, you talk to people, and there's always the same things. Um, you know, Switzerland is very backwardish. Uh, they're not ready. The market's simply not ready yet for peer-to-peer -peer lending. You know, this is not going to work. These two people, they'd rather sit in the mountains and eat fondue. Um, if we look at the next slide, so what were the challenges that we were facing with, uh, that we faced? So what did people tell us? Well, first thing they said, yes, uh, everyone is wealthy in Switzerland, no one needs a loan. Um, actually, you could think. The second one is uh, lending and borrowing are highly regulated. So the barriers of entry in Switzerland into that space are extremely difficult and extremely high. And the third one is that banks obviously own this domain. Um, you know, it's very hard to enter that market because simply the incumbents have a lot of a lot of power. So what can I say to those three points? The first answer to that one is, yes, of course, there are a lot of wealthy individuals in Switzerland, but like as in many other countries, the wealth is unevenly distributed. So every 12th, uh, you know, uh, person in Switzerland who could apply for a loan has a loan outstanding. And those loan balances are usually quite large, uh, roughly 30,000 Swiss francs. When you compare that to Germany, where the average loan balance is more to three to 5,000 euros. Then also lending and borrowing are highly regulated. That is a fact. Um, and the barriers of entry are high, but uh, we started, uh, one of the first things we did in, when we started uh, Lend is that we made sure that we are regulatory compliant on all the levels that apply to the peer-to-peer -peer lending concept in Switzerland. So be it consumer protection laws, which are highly rigid, uh, or you know, the, the laws that you have in terms of anti-money laundering and you know, when you want to work as a financial intermediary. And to the third point, yes, banks own this domain, but they also played the oligopoly. So you basically had three players up until now in Switzerland, and they did not hurt each other in pricing. So if we go to the next slide, we see how we have developed. Peer-to-peer -peer growth volumes in Switzerland, um, you know, as, as just uh, I've come back from the Lendit conference in London today, growth volumes are amazing, not only in Switzerland, but all over the world. Um, and the market is still nowhere. If we just look at our market that we're in, with a peer-to-peer -peer lender, we have some competitors, some of them are in the audience, I understand. Um, we have a 90 million market forecasted for peer-to-peer -peer lending in 2017. Sorry, yes. And the annual outstanding loan revolves, revolves is around 4 billion. So even if there are competitors in peer-to-peer -peer lending space, there's a lot of cake to eat for everyone. So the growth will continue and it is our target that we can say we have around 10 to 15 percent market share of this 4 billion uh, volume market which revolves every year. 
We have, and it's already outdated, we have already close to 9,000 users. Uh, all in all, we have more than 600 funded projects. We have a default rate of zero. And on average, you will see that later we've generated 5.5% return for our investors after fees. Next one. So um, with that, I'd like to quickly showcase the demo. So yeah. here you have a quick view of my personal dashboard, um, just to give you a background of Oh, that's so good. Just to give you an idea of my personal background, I spent 15 years in investment banking, um, so I also accumulated some wealth. Uh, I spent the last three years in structured products, and when I always went to family or friends of reunions, they asked me, are you investing in your own structured products that you produce? I said, well, I'm, I'm not really allowed to, but even if I was allowed to, I probably wouldn't. So. Here is a bit of a different case. <laughs> As you can see, I trust in, uh, in, in our own product. I invest into this product, and it has generated me some nice returns. So when you look at the first line, um, you can see what was my initial commitment, so close to 140,000 Swiss francs, out of which 60,000 are still outstanding. And the net annualized return is a big number that we, we specifically wanted to showcase that to investors in Switzerland, because if you go on the golf course and you say, what was your return on your, you know, on your fixed income portfolio last year? And you can say five and a half percent, that isn't bad. So everything is given down to the detail. Um, you can see, you know, we have, I've invested originally in 30 loans, uh, out of which 11 have already early repayment. Uh, 17 are current and two are in grace, which means their payment, the payment was meant to come on the first of the month always, um, but obviously they're, you know, a little late. But we have no, as you can see, there are no, there are no contracts in more than 15 days late status. Uh, we don't have any charged off and we don't have any defaults on that, on that portfolio. Um, so coming, coming back, this is the status of the loans. I can filter down. Uh, you know, which scores I have I invested in. So it gives you, it gives you a breakdown of how risky or how racy my portfolio is. And uh, also the category. So, you know, there's always different reasons in life why you would need a loan. And as a borrower, you have to show what, what, why, what you need the money for, basically. Um, here on these, on, uh, I won't go into the details, I think it's not, you know, it shouldn't be the concept of the presentation, but you can basically drill down Unto the last cent in terms of where's your money, uh, how did you get it back, and how many fees are we charging, and where's the money flowing back over time. I'll just quickly give you that view. Um, we call this the Thailand, the Thailand uh, uh, sheet, simply because we have some investors who are retired and you know they're living on pension, and they're looking at how much money do I have to invest or keep out there so that I make at least 500 Swiss francs return um, on, on, on my interest because that covers my interest expense uh, or my living expense when I do holidays in Thailand. Uh, so over time you will always see how much money is flowing back um, and we, as I said we, we are Swiss based. Uh, regulations, regulatory wise is, is still a bit difficult in Europe to quickly scale out into other markets. But we believe that the Swiss market, with the 4 billion revolving every year, 7 billion overall, uh, gives enough juice that we, can, that we can tap into. And given we had two funding rounds and we are now scaling up the business, as we've said, we're currently at a run rate of around 2 million every month in loans. Uh, we are quite confident that we can scale up even more, simply because our rates are way lower than what the banks can offer, because we don't have all the overhead that banks have. Um, Maybe go back to the slide quickly. So if you have any questions um, on the lender side and on the investor side, um, I led the two funding rounds, uh, the Series A and the, the seed round earlier. And Claudio, who is also a former investment banker, he's worked for, with me for many years. He led the sales desk at Barclays here in Switzerland as well. Um, we go after the lenders, and if you have any questions, please direct them to either me or Claudio. And that concludes my presentation.
Thank you, Florian. Um, do we have a few questions? Maybe while the questions are going, if I can remind the investors in the room to finish uh, their scoring cards, and if you could just pass them to the desk, we're going to start tabulating those so that we are not delayed with the final results. Uh, questions, though? In the back, Nelson first. So oh, sorry. Uh, Nelson, we'll come to you next. We'll go with this one first. Hi. Thanks for that uh, great presentation. Um, I noticed in Funding Circle, they've recently changed their, their model now, and I wanted to know, are you able to select the exact loans that you invest in as an investor? Yes, uh, as of now, you, you are uh, able to, you will, so, maybe rewind. I, you know, coming back from this conference in London, it is, it is a fact that the peer lending model, peer-to-peer -peer lending model, will rotate into an institutional business. So, as of now, we have around 80% retail funders, on our platform and 20% institutional, but the institutional side will grow and soon it will be reverted in the other way around, that we have 20% retail or maybe even less. The bulk will be institutional lenders. Um, that is a fact. We, we will offer the loan packages in different ways. So be it as an SPV and you can either, you know, hold, be holder of a first loss tranche of a, or of a senior tranche. But on the platform, if you direct investly, a direct, a direct, uh, directly, you will always know where your money is. That is one of our claims. Hope this answers your question. Yep. Okay. Nelson, uh, uh, do you want to? So I saw you have a bunch of categories for riskiness of the loans. So how do you evaluate the riskiness? Good question. So we work closely with uh, our exclusive partner, Intrum Justitia, which is um, basically covering 97% of the population in Switzerland. And how do they cover them? They, uh, they have, um, they're the biggest collections company worldwide, I think. I mean, definitely the biggest collections company in Switzerland. And we have access to their data pool. Um, so with that data pool, for example, even if your credit records show that you do not have any outstanding loan balances or that you are maybe, you know, maybe you have open records in the credit bureau, um, with that partnership that we have, we can see if someone is paying his phone bill late, we can see if someone is paying late his, you know, healthcare uh, premiums regularly and that information filters through into our rating system and then we assign a score to every individual borrower and according to the score bands uh, it gets then put into different uh, rating categories. Great, another question? No? Okay, oh, there we go. Yes, so Switzerland again is a very unique, a unique market. As I said, the banks, until now, the banks have owned this market. We are an official lender. So that means in Switzerland, if you borrow money from Credit Suisse, your, your loan balance will be entered into a central ledger of all loans outstanding. So if you then go across the street and ask UBS whether you can have a loan, they will know that you borrowed money from Credit Suisse. So the way we handle that, actually 80% of our loans that we fund are refinancings. So it's mostly people who have loans outstanding at much higher interest rates because the banks until recently charged 12% on average and we can re-offer at 7% on average. Um, so, so we then assign, we close the outstanding balance with Credit Suisse and then he basically pays the installments to us. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as I said, I. Um, so, the interest rates, I'm 100% sure the interest rates are still too high, way too high. Um, I myself, I have, you know, as I said, 10 years background in credit trading. I led the corporate credit trading in, in London at UBS. And when I look at the risk return profiles of the bonds that are traded, or if you take a good example, uh, Argentina recently issued a bond in Swiss francs, three and a half years at three and three eighths coupon. Uh, if, if, you know, they defaulted six times over the last century, the recent one was 2014. So if, if I compare that to, you know, private loans that you can enter directly and make a, a much higher yield, then for me, that is no question. Um, I, I still do not own any co owe any coffee to anyone because usually at the end of the presentation I offer someone uh, I would pay a coffee if they convince me that they find a better fixed income investment in Swiss francs. <laughs> 
Good challenge. <laughs> uh, we'll leave that one open. You can email us. Um, last question, anyone? Okay. Okay. No pressure. Thanks Thank you, Florian. That was great. <laughs> Cheers.